We're here at the Old Milk Jail in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. In 1859, this building held Union soldiers and Confederate supplies within its walls. Revolutionary war battles occurred elsewhere, but here in the hills and valleys of what was to become Wilkes County, the war for American independence was fought mostly among colonial residents of different persuasions. Hollywood was an infamous escape artist. He escaped from at least 10 different prisons, except this one. Ray Absher also stated that there could possibly be an Indian burial ground due to the Sari Indians occupying the land in the 17 and 1800s. The most well-known story is a tale of love, lust, deceit, and murder. Tom Dula had three concurrent affairs with the cousins, Ann Melton, Perlene Foster, and Laura Foster. Laura was found with a knife wound in her chest. Tom was arrested for the murder of Laura Foster in 1867. The grave of Laura Foster can still be seen from Highway 268 in Caldwell County. Tom was incarcerated here until his lawyer moved the trial to Statesville. Two hundred feet from this property used to stand the Tory Oak. It played a dark role during the Revolutionary War. At least five British loyalists were court-martialed and sentenced to hang from that tree. Colonel Cleveland oversaw these executions and his family's cabin still stands here today, 50 feet from the jail. The piece of the Tory Oak is still encased at the museum. Is there residual energy still stemming from the Civil War? Or is there intelligent visitation coming from the outer realm. Okay, we are in the uh, Old Wilkes Jail. It's built in 1859. Histor historic structure here in downtown Wilkesboro, North Carolina. It's managed by Wilkes Heritage Community Center Incorporated, which is a nonprofit that uh, provides uh, the public with the uh, historic resources in which they connect with their history and we've been operation as a heritage museum since 2004 museum doors open and it came to our attention in 2005-2006 uh, it would be a good idea to have ghost tours as a fundraiser based on all the stories we were getting coming in we thought it would be a good idea to to, uh, to conduct a survey and get and the question the, the ghost stories really flourished they came these artifacts that are here a date to the 19th century uh, that are behind me. There's a Brazilian rosewood piano behind me that belonged to General James B. Gordon, who was a Wilkes County general, brigadier general in the war between the states. And uh, he went to school at Emory Henry today, his Emory University, which is near Abington, Virginia. As a young man from Wilkes County, North Carolina, and his family had means, the Gordons were fairly fairly uh, rich, wealthy. What was that? <laughs> did you hear that? I did hear that. Yeah, I don't, don't Oh, that, that gave me cocktails. Well, that, that was very similar to what uh, I heard. It was like a door opening or closing. Cody, your mic's off, remember? See, that's why I don't want to mute it, because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's common in here. Things will, will happen like that. I'm trying, I feel like it was back here. Is that what you heard earlier, Kim? Katie. Or Katie, sorry. Yeah. I can't be for sure because I have uh, these headphones on so I couldn't match the sound, but it was a thump of something. That's, that's common in here. 
like to experience. It sounded like it was underneath the, the staircase. Right, it, and those kinds of sounds are common in here. Okay, and the bathroom heavily. door was sort of closed, but it that's definitely not the sound we heard. Wow. So that's, that's kind of an interesting story. But we're in the jailer's quarters, and you think about something that stayed in operation in the old jail here from, eight, uh, from 1859 to early 1950s, almost 90 years. There was a lot of historical events that happened here. A lot of inmates passed through these doors of uh, personal confinement, places of, uh, such as battlefields, places where there's been a lot of emotional stress are seems to be places where haunted instances, and what is this? A place of confinement. This is an old jail. It's not the Tower of London, obviously, but it does have some very interesting people that were incarcerated here that we'll get to a little bit later in the tour. So yeah. was there any like specific things that happened to people here, or you've had experiences in this, in this particular room? Yes, and both in this room and the jailer's kitchen, which is next door, uh, during investigations uh, and also during ghost tours, occasionally people will get a glimpse of shadow figures in here. We've also had people experience that have been on ghost tours or uh, uh, on paranormal investigations experience cold uh, places, drops in temperature. Uh, we've also had people experience where somebody has touched them on the back of the shoulder, turn around, nobody's there. And we have phantom sounds that seem to emerge like we heard a few minutes ago of just stuff moving around and there's nothing there to cause the sound. And so I'm, I've, I've experienced that so many times over the years that I almost become a, immune to any, but people when they hear They've heard they hear the, those things for the first time sometimes become a little bit shaken up. We have had reports of on school tours in here that people will ask where the docent is. Uh, we'll say, well, what docent? I said, there's a, a lady by the fire here dressed in old-fashioned clothing working with the fire as if there's a fire in the fireplace, cooking by the fire. And I said, was that a reenactor or a docent? I said, no. That, and we've, we actually have had school children say that they saw somebody in here with, period, with uh, 19th century clothing on. If you look at the artifacts here uh, that are here, uh, things are as they were in the 19th century. Fire was still your main source of heat. Uh, there's a lot of things here that gives us hints of the Native Americans, the gourds. Uh, they used string beans such as, were known as Leather bridges. Hmm. Uh, that's the way that the Indians preserve their beans. Over the past year, some of the EVPs that have come into here strangely have been interpreted in what is believed to be Catawba Indian language. Hmm. In EVPs, uh, we, in the most recent one a few years ago, we had that of a lady's voice and saying some kind of expression, seemingly unintelligible, and it turned out to be Catawba Indian language. And there were the Catawba Indian group that was in here specifically, the tribe was known as the Chitero. And they were a branch of the Sara or Saratown Indians. You've heard of Saratown mm -hmm. down South Carolina. It's actually referred to as Shara, like Shara, South Carolina, mm -hmm. or, or Saratown in North Carolina. But those were the same Indians that lived along the river. The Indian word for Yadkin is Saponi. In the, in the Catawba Indian language. Lots of influence here from the Native Americans. And it's believed, and I wrote about this in my ghost book and with the paranormal places across the country, that places where there was uh, Indian burial grounds are sometimes places that have a reputation for activity. And we were right on Indian burial grounds because the Southeast Indians grew their corn in the bottom lands they buried their dead on the high ground which we're standing. Some of the things that have been heard and seen and here, uh, they've experienced, people have reported shadow figures in this room, vapors uh, that have come out of the walls, and even glimpses of full-bodied apparitions 
the time to time. And, and pe apparently people have been described as dressed in much more old-fashioned clothing. The subject. Is there anything that happens here in this area? Yes. Reported, we've had people take film and shoot infrared down here and, re and re report that that painting over there has moved. Our infrared objects have, have been made apparent coming through the walls in this particular location right here. And that's, that's shown up a few times. That painting down there historically is based on a, a woman that, who was a, alive during the time that Tom Dooley lived in Wilkes County. And she was the storekeeper's wife. Her name was uh, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Coles. And uh, she, was the, she was Martha Coles, who lived in Elkville, near the junction of today's uh, Highway 268 in Elk Creek Road. Hmm. Like you're going to Leatherwood Mountains there. And that particular store at that particular time, in Tom Dooley's days, was an old general store. And the community today, it was used to be known as Wheeler, a Wheeling Store. And back in that particular era, it was known as Cole's Store. And William Coles and his wife Martha are also characters in the modern day play, Tom Dooley Books County Legend. And this happens to be interesting in some standpoints because the features of this person, this is uh, Karen Reynolds, the playwright's great-grandmother, Martha Coles is. And so they, if you look at her features, and Karen's that's a longtime friend of mine, they have like features in common, which is kind of striking. Yeah. But Martha Coles was, was a person probably who sympathized with Tom Dooley and believed him to be innocent. Mm -hmm. They were friends of Tom Dooley and perhaps helped finance the defense attorney. There are very few personal artifacts tied to Tom Dooley still in existence. But I'm standing on one, my one right now. This is the arraignment desk when they brought Tom Dooley in. They did it again. Yes. It's the same sound. That's the one. Which, which you know, which door? The bathroom. Yeah. It's directly beneath is you. Is it the it bathroom is. door or is it the? No, I was sitting in the bathroom when it happened, and I can. Is that place the underneath the stairs? Close in that direction. Dude, I mean, is there anything underneath the stairs at all? Or no. Or? She can investigate that too. Like Harry Potter's room. <laughs> the cupboard under the stairs. Keep and we'll keep going. I'll keep okay, talking okay. about it. Yeah. So this is the arraignment desk. Okay. Uh, after uh, the posse and and uh, James Grayson, Colonel James Grayson, bought Tom Dooley back in uh, in late August of, of set of eighteen sixty six. And and captured him, of course, in eastern Tennessee. Brought him back to the old Wilkes jail. He was incarcerated here for a couple of months, uh, awaiting for to be relocated to Statesville, North Carolina. He was defended in the court by Zebulon Vance, the former war governor of North Carolina, and of course the case lost. It was appealed, and they lost the appeal. You got a lot on that thing? No. The arraignment desk right here, you actually tell visitors to take the catalog of ghost tours. You can actually put your hands on this desk. The air vent is right here. So if the air kicks on, it might move it. Okay. So it's kind of interesting because you can touch something that you can relate to Tom Dooley. Of course, I'm well familiar with the science out of the field. That's what I'm thinking. It's hitting this. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, Marty, that thing's stupid. It's a lot of me. It's That's where the air is coming out, where the vents are. Yeah. So my thinking is, when the air kicks on, it's, it's kicking that. Then we know that suction. Okay. So we know that. That's I good. think that's what's going on. So what I did okay. Was I latched it. it. I latched it. Had to put that thing so it can't move. 
That, and to see if it happens again. If it happens again, because I, I tapped it some and it wouldn't make that sound again. Yeah. So if it happens again, I have no idea yeah. what it is. Exactly. So here are some colorful pictures of three characters involved in, in the love triangle. Let's talk a little bit about the love triangle. Tom Dooley was a Confederate soldier returning home in the summer of 1866. And then he began resuming a romance with his childhood sweetheart, Ann Melton. Laura Foster, however, was her first cousin. Ann Melton had some intense rivalry and jealousy going on because of the relationship that Tom Dooley struck up with Laura Foster. Another aspect of this that's complicating is that down from Watauga County, another first cousin with both these girls was a young lady by the name of Pauline Foster. Now, the, back in those days, they, they pronounced it Pearline. That Pearline was jealous as well of Laura Foster. She sided with Ann Melton, and there may have been two of them working, operating together, one holding, maybe one holding, dragging the stake home. And one thought or theory is that Tom Dooley came up on witnessing what was, had just taken place, was probably re regretted what had happened, but trying to protect Anne and her position that maybe helped, helped bury the body. That's one thought. A lot, so many things came out in the court record that are suspicious in so many ways. Today, there's no real, uh, no real answers except conjecture in most any direction you look. Uh, I will say this, in 1866, there was no, uh, autopsies couldn't tell the cause of death. And but there was a stab wound found in the heart. So, you know, there again, they did not have enough uh, uh, science and capability in those days for, for looking at such things as DNA evidence and so forth. That's what I'm getting at. So technology didn't allow. Today, the investigation may have, in today's science, may have uncovered who did it and it, with more clues, but obviously in the time and place, it left it with a great shroud of mystery. But the infamous murder triangle was Tom Dooley, R. Foster, and Melton. My theory is... What's yours? I, I feel like Anne's more involved than what everyone's... Well, I mean, just from listening to the stories and all the, you know, in videos and everything that's out there, I think there's even there was a story that she was on her deathbed and had confessed mm -hmm. that she was involved, whether that you know her murdering Laura mm -hmm. or if she was just involved in somehow some way. But I feel like that would be more motive too, like from her side than Tom's, just because she was very jealous. Well, Doc Watson's Laura, grandmother so. uh, was was at that bedside and apparently gave an account first person of a confession. So I believe that Ann Melton was involved. I do want to say that when you started talking about the deathbed confession that your microphone cut out briefly, came back and hasn't done it since. Huh. Well, the interesting, we're going in Ann Melton's jail cell now, and we're standing next to it. And some of the EP evidence, EVP evidence has been that they've asked in this particular cell here has been that of a woman's voice. Ann Melton was incarcerated on this side while Tom Dooley was incarcerated on the other side. Now this little experiment that I tell people when I'm on tours, beat on that wall over there, or walk around on the other side and beat on the wall. Whoa. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I did. I heard a voice. Yeah. I, I thought it was... Mm -hmm. Oh, did you hear that? I heard a voice. Oh. Okay, and I was talking about Tom Dooley quarter. and Ann, and that kind of thing has happened to me here as well. See, so I yeah. that was an EVP that was uh, what we all heard. So I, I believe that might have been. Where do you think that was? It did. You heard it. The oh yeah, I, I heard it with my own ear, and I was like, "What was that?" Because I was well, turning. Well, and, and here's something I'll tell you firsthand. I've given hundreds of tours in here. And when I start talking about the details of what happened, I've gotten responses in here before like that. 
either a woman's voice or either a man's voice. I'm gonna and, prop this in because prayer. it creates so much of an emotional tug. If the spirits are here, but. then they are aware. <laughs> I'd say Tom Dooley probably knows me as much as anybody. Right. If, if 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 he's here, present, and Ann Melton, I've, I've conversed with him many times. So. In I've a got way, an EVP recorder recording this hallway right here, just in case we hear it again. All over there. Or walk around on the other side and be all over there. Or walk around on the other side and be all After going back through the video, we determined that this, in fact, was not a voice, and that it was an explained sound. During our walkthrough, RG walks over a few boards that make the sound. I matched this up with Katie's solo video where she had stepped across the same boards and at the same exact time, they had also made noise. <laughs> we know that the jailer reported downstairs that Tom Dooley and Ann Melton would beat on the walls constantly throughout the day and they would argue over the details of the case because these are the original walls. They haven't been doctored in any fashion. So, this is the ladies jail cell. What has been interesting is that some of the EVPs over time and in investigations have come back. When you ask about, did you do it? Do you know who did it? Those kinds of questions tonight, if you do those kinds of questions, uh, you may find some, get some data. <laughs> be interested to see if you do. And this must be a good night for investigation because I, I detect we're getting some presence in here. So you consider yourself sensitive I'm very sensitive, yeah, and uh, and of course I'm, you know, I'm uh, a fairly scientific type person with plants, environment, and and, and wildlife, and nature, and fishing, and 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 outdoor activities. I consider myself that way and believe in you know the works of good works of science and that kind of thing. But yet, I believe that the possibility of supernatural is very real. Absolutely. And I've experienced it numerous times. All the way back to when I was in high school. And a recent, recent investigation conducted by the Heritage Hunters uh, in the old jail. <clears throat> they asked the question in, in Ann Melton's cell, what killed Tom Dooley? I mean, what killed Laura Foster? And a female voice came back and said, the creek. Hmm. Keep in mind that they did not know the actual cause of death, but there was a stab wound in the, in the, in the chest. But it's possible, and one theory is, that she was finished off by holding her body below the surface of the water in the creek that they drug her down mm. on the way to her burial. And if this is the case, this is astonishing. They found a piece of evidence in, in a paranormal investigation through an EVP after uh, 160 some years, cause of death may, may have actually been uh, drowning. We are in the jail cell of Tom Dooley. We're also in the jail cell of Otto Wood. Otto Wood was brought here when he was 13 years old. He was a gangster in North Carolina. He had a reputation of breaking out of more jails than any other person in America. He broke out of Central Prison in Raleigh twice. But he was brought in to the Old Wilkes Jail and incarcerated in this jail cell when he was 13 years old. He was brought in for stealing a bicycle. He did not escape out of the old jail, the Old Wilkes Jail, though. He was... Uh, he was shot and killed in a police shootout in Salisbury, North Carolina on New Year's Eve, 1930. And they, of course, they had Tommy guns. The bullet holes are still some of the old buildings today with the 45 caliber Tommy guns that were used in the shootout. But the most famous person of all that's ever been incarcerated here was Thomas C. Dula. He's better known as Tom Dooley, which is the way the name was pronounced in the time. And, of course, he was brought in here for the murder of Laura Foster, incarcerated in the old jail for a couple months before he was moved, relocated to Iredell County uh, because uh, his defending defense attorney, Zebulon Vance, did not think he would get a fair trial in Willis County. Where he was convicted, he lost an appeal, and he was hanged on May 1st, 1868 for the, first, for the murder of Laura Foster. He was hanged about the locations of the front steps of Mitchell Community College in, in downtown Statesville. It's about where the site was. It's where the old gallows, crude gallows was erected. He was brought back, his body was brought back to Wilkes County by his family, he was buried under an apple tree, which still stands. And also take you to Laura Foster's grave 
just off Highway 268 in Caldwell County. And I can take you down Melton's grade near the junction of the Gladys Fork and the Bill Horton Road in Wilkes County where she's buried. The, two, the three graves today, interestingly, form almost a perfect equilateral triangle, you know, which is pretty bizarre, uh, which is kind of interesting, a little bit of extra uh, myst mysticism. Triangle. Yeah, <laughs> murder triangle, indeed. Yeah. And triangle and death, too, and as, as well as in romance. But what's interesting, Images of Wilkes Magazine reporter came in a few years ago, back in 2009, interviewing me, and I picked up this, or I was telling him, how did they bring Tom Dooley in? I said he was brought in with shackles and chains. And when I finished that sentence, there was no ball and chain in here, but this is the sound that we heard went on for about 15 or 20 seconds. And went on for 15 or 20 seconds. I looked at the reporter and his face was as white as a white sheet of paper. In fact, he never came back. So that gives you some indication of the activity that may take place here. But what a coincidence. How did they bring Tom Dooley in in shackles and chains? And that, 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 that's the sound we heard. Both of myself and the reporter heard that afternoon when he was interviewing me in here. Now, Tom Dooley and Ann Melton apparently struggled. Their eternal struggle even goes on today between these two walls. And Joanne Beatty, the past curator, would hear what she thought were quarreling man and woman appear in the jail. And she was working downstairs in her office back in the mid-1990s. So could, be, could it be that Tom Dooley and Ann Melton still walk the whereabouts of this old jail? Interesting to think about. It's almost like you can feel the personalities and you kind of know what their, their emotions were. It's re really strange. Mm -hmm. I get that, that feeling, that sixth sense feeling they talk about. Or I do. Curious to see what we'll find tonight then. Okay. Katie, I'm at 95 right now. 97. The temperature? No, my heart rate. Oh. Oh. Is that normal for you? No. My normal resting is like 73. Oh. But earlier when we were, I put my head in. I put my head like no, had it's 99 right now. It's just jumped from 94 to 99. What kinds of things are so that's not normal for you? No, my normal resting heart rate, like recently, is probably we 73 to 78. Commonly in the jail cell. But when I was putting my hand on the desk right. earlier, it went to like 83, 85, and that was whatever. But I just checked it again, and it's gone from 94 to 99 to. Let's see what it reads here in just a second. I would say 92. probably the frequency of of maybe one out of 50 people, two out of 50 maybe. Uh, ever so often we'll have somebody that's in this room and they will, they will feel uneasy on their stomach. They'll, they'll actually leave the tour and say, I just feel terrible. And, and they were fine until they came up here, but we've had more than, that happened more than once. And I would say the frequency is about one in 50. Something like that, maybe two in 50. One or two percent of the, of, the, of the people on the tour experience something, and numerous people have experienced cold spots in here. And sometimes people <laughs> go, going up down the stairs report somebody's tapped them on the shoulder. I was going to wait till y'all got up here to see if you felt it. Here, I trust you guys. Yeah, both of y'all's is up, but that does. Five. But I know this thing says it's 82. I really don't feel like it's 82 in here, so it might be a little, a little off. But. I detected with a gradient, a little drop right here. Let's see if it's still That's there. exactly where I was standing when Sorry, I just hit the chain. That's kind of right here. Yeah, I detect a little, got the temperature gradient right there. Does it do anything? It's the same. Do you, there's like marks oh, you ain't head. kidding. I feel that. I can feel I, like yeah. breathing. I can feel oh, like. Oh, look, it's going down. Yeah, but okay. I feel it's like, not going down like crazy, but. But I feel like right here, like I'm right smelling, there. like I, not smelling the smell. 
it's like um it, literally it's like the the smell of heat oh. you know what i mean and i noticed it because i'm it's used to it down. it's going down i noticed it because i'm used to it at least a two temperature two degree drop it was 82 now it's 80. yep question i mean i feel it too right here it's still going down look it's still going down people walking you definitely take a temperature break. Or like something dragging across the floor. Uh, they, uh, that's so the just from furniture. Yeah, they basically like furniture, furniture. Floor is a good shape, but it's all original floor. There has been refloored actually. So I felt it. I, I stepped right there and I felt it with no gauges. I haven't needed. You should be able to. You should be able to hear me through his though. Temperature break. Look, 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 come here. Look, and that's to document that that is, there is a slot temperature changer. Of course, you know, I'm going further up in the room. Okay, I got four minutes left. Okay. You know, if, you know, if we bring it up here too, it's gonna, it's gonna go up. But I feel like that's the only, see how we're back at 82. You come back down here. You know, the smell that I'm smelling is like the smell of a sauna. You know, when you go in a sauna and like the wood is stamped and like, that's what it just smelled like over there. Like it was... I feel like it's not. It's the coldest right there. Yeah, I'm war it's warm over here. But when I walk here, oh yeah, it's really dropped off right here. Well, let's make sure when we go down the stairs... Yeah, that's that barely moving over here, so it's definitely... Pumping air right in there. Well, right underneath here is the the front room where that other the yeah. Stuff is. This suggests that this was the knife, the kitchen knife that was used to do the deed to kill Laura Foster. Actually, it's not proven, but it's rather haunting to think about because she had about a six-inch opening in her chest. The knife weighed to right at six inches. And the knife was confirmed to belong to Tom Dooley's mother. As we were switching out our camera setups for the investigation, Katie and myself felt as if someone had walked up to us, and we both felt sick to our stomachs at the same exact time. After Katie left the building, I felt the feeling of frustration, and I made a vocal statement about it. However, we continued working on the setup. That was so weird. It's recording. I can't. You're not. You gotta hold this. Well, I swear we just put these in. We did. And yeah. they're both dead. That one right there, that's one I was well, using for the interview, nah, it's, right? That's dead. That's going to die, though. I, well, it's recording, so do whatever you're wanting to do. And I got to go get batteries, I guess. Well, no, go get them right now. Because they're already dead. Do do it's a hurry. we got to go to live here in a few minutes. Well, I guess well, one of them's going to have to battery. Do what you want to do right quick while it's recording, and then Will we'll go and work? get the battery. What I'm saying is, though, that one has to have a battery, like right now, for someone to go in. Okay, well, that's the problem. We have to do live anyway, so how are we gonna do someone going in? Video. Hmm. Hey. All right, so we're here at the Old Wilkes Jail. Um, <laughs> actually, starting to live here in a few minutes. It sounds like. Yep. So, here's the deal. One of y'all is going in solo until the rest of the team gets to come in. And since Kim's doing the live, it's gonna be one of you two. <laughs> so who wants to pick a name from the hat? I think you should let Kim. Yeah, I was gonna say Kim should do it. She's oh. a fast. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> and then whatever name you get, bring it up to the camera and let them see. <laughs> Take your radio if you need us, just in case you get freaked out somehow. So, here goes nothing.
upstairs at Old Wilkes Jail. Just gonna fill this a little bit. So I got plenty of. things to talk about in here. <laughs> Sit down right here for a minute. Let y'all get used to me. I'll get used to you. Maybe you won't feel like I'm talking to myself. This little device right here will pick up your voice even if it's not loud enough for me to traditionally hear. If you would like to talk to me, I would love to listen. Sounds like you went through a lot in here. Spent a lot of time banging on the walls with the Tom next door. Do you think you could do that for me now? How did you feel when you were first brought in here? I know that I'll take a lot of energy out of you, but I would really appreciate it. But you see, they bring me along because I don't think ghosts are real. So I would love to be proved wrong. Do you think you can hit this wall behind me? We're going to be here all night. If you feel like talking to me later, you're more than welcome to. Is Tom Dooley here tonight with us? How did you feel about having to sign the paperwork on this desk? Too many bad vibes, but one hell of a bad vibe in here right now. Is anybody else here with me? You can talk to me. It's awfully dark and dreary in here. Alright. See if I can't put this down to record for a minute. Is anybody here willing to talk to me tonight? Can anybody give me any indication that they're here? Katie, you can't board. Go for Katie. Are you 10 4? I was just checking the, our radio lit up and up and number. No, I'm good. I'm in the in cell right now. No activity so far. Okay. Are you okay with us being here? Is somebody out there? It seemed like there was a shadow that crossed in front of that dim light right there. I could see it over here. What's really interesting right now 
is that looking at this wall, um, I want to say about right here, I can see two shining things, but on the camera I can't pick anything up. Tom, are you here? Is anybody else here with me? If you decide that you want to talk to us later, we'll be here for a while. Somebody there? That may have been that adjusting, but at the same time that adjusted, my radio went off. Okay. If that was you, I would still love to talk. I just need somebody to say something. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that I need to stay in this room. Are you afraid to let me know that you're here? I'm gonna go back downstairs now. Oh Lord. Anybody down here? I'm a married woman, but are you still gonna look at me? <laughs> Good time. Now you just hear more than coming in. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like a vent, but it's locked. Um, I stood up from it, walked over. I want to say a good like 10, 15 seconds later, I hear the, the lock on it pop. About the same time as my radio, the static, as if something had hit it. Which is weird because we got a green light on ours, and that's why I was like, what was that? And I looked at it, and I picked it up. That's why I checked on it. Was that right before? Nope, completely different. Okay. Hmm. Completely separate occasion. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Is, uh, <laughs> we are going upstairs. Is that one going dinner? Mine? Huh? Are you asking mine? Yeah. Yes. Hold on just a, a second. A little overbearing. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh. oh. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe we should get the door. There's something about this room. Anything wants to come in. Oh. Oh, I kind of want to. Can y'all see us right now? We're trying not to have the light be too overbearing, but be able to still not to see weird. That wasn't you? No, it never has never gone off after we've set it down like that, have we? Only when we test it for it to work. I wonder if it's movement. Vibration. Thank okay. you all for the yeses. Okay. Maybe that's what it was, just us moving around. Stomp one more time. I want this. Let's see if it does it with it all the way up. It might because it's just because when the antenna's all the way up, it's very sensitive. Uh, okay, there we go. So it's kind of like this threshold where it's coming through. Okay. 
We are in Tom Dooley so right now, y'all. We do have some blackout curtains up, um, trying our best to block out most of the street lights and such. Hopefully we can get up Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do EVP session. Are you okay? It's hot like Is your heart thing going up again? Um Wow, my heart rate was already thingy was already up. That's what I was thinking. 123 BPM. So we, today, uh, thank you Joy for sharing. Today, while we were doing our tour, um, both myself, Katie, and Morgan all have watches that will tell us our heart rate. And all of ours was, I would say, significantly higher than our normal resting. Mm -hmm. And it um, fluctuate very rapidly. Yeah, definitely changed quickly. Katie's especially changed, like, really drastically. Like, 30 beats per minute different. I went to 125, I believe, to like 84. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, so definitely interesting. I guess we're going we're gonna to do an EVP session. Um, so it's probably going to be very quiet, minus the questions that we ask. Um, which I feel like we might have to be somewhat here because a lot of it's been like, well, it's either been feelings or noises uh, so far. So is there anyone in this room right now that is affecting the women. It's really cool over here. My name's Cody. Across from me is Kim. Morgan's to my left, and Katie is across. Across, from across me. whatever, Jason, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Are you affecting Katie right now? What is your name? What, Kathy? That's crazy. Stop me. Kathy uh, Stafford was watching our video and she said that Laura Foster was her fourth cousin. What? Kathy, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there someone else here? Not even Tom at all. Is it Otto? Anybody else upset that Tom gets all the attention? What's the spirit's name that's here? And how did you die? Are you a guard? Soldier, were you hung from the Tory tree? Are you still visiting this jail? Susan, after we listen through, we'll ask him to show us a sign. Don't that. Susan, after we listen through, we'll ask him to show us a sign. Don't see that. Show us a sign. Don't see that. Show us a sign. Don't see that. No, no, it's here. No, no, it's here. What? Huh? It just sounded like something like ticked over, or like. I don't know. Maybe if we try pounding on the walls? It was like it was downstairs. 
Something tipping over? Well, yeah, like a... I totally miss that. I, yeah, I didn't hear anything. I my hearing this, so I don't know. It was like definitely on this side of me. Bring this in there too. It hurt. Oh my god. So in this room, um, there's a couple things that have been said. One being that they have heard like banging on the walls, um, and they think it was possibly the female and Tom like knocking back and forth to each other. That infrared keeps making my camera go out of focus. Mine too. What infrared? On hers. I don't know. My camera won't stay in focus. I don't know, my camera won't stay in focus. On hers. I don't know, my camera won't stay in focus. On hers. I don't know, my camera won't stay in focus. Recording in the females. So there will be a little bit of movement on this. Um, okay. So hopefully it will be too. So apparently So there will be a little bit of movement on this. Um okay. so hopefully it no, no, thank you be too bad. So apparently okay. so hopefully it no, no, thank you be too bad. So apparently thank you be too bad. Thank you be too bad. We heard there would be some people in here banging on this wall. So I want to see if what they say is true. So if you can mimic my knock, let us know. There's a recorder right here you can speak into, and we can play it back and listen to your voice. Or you can go up to this blue light and get near it and it will make noises and light up it won't hurt you at all but it'll let us know that you're here with us but if you can if you can't do any of that at least try to knock on this wall and just mimic what i knock okay is there anybody here with us Anna, are you in this room? Whoa. What was that? Just kept bouncing back and forth. No, did you not hear that noise? That was no. A camera noise. It was a camera coming off. Oh, out there. there. Out in there. Yeah, but yeah. did you see the thing flicker whenever that? Let me go check this camera. I think it just turned off or something. That was weird. I think that was the one downstairs. I feel like the camera downstairs may have done something because that sounds like one of these cameras. Our temperature's going down in here too. We're at 77.7. Seven. You come follow me. Let's go check that camera. Oh, I can tell you much. Okay, y'all, so Katie and I are staying up here. We're going to go to your room downstairs to check that camera.
Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Alright, it's a new battery. recorder see if we have any voices that answer our questions. Just managed to plop myself down next to the uh, train. <laughs> train. Like I've been leaning on it this whole time. It's just in the toilet over there. It's fine. Oh, you know. More than hanging out by the fireplace. <laughs> How could you brought those with you? Okay, in that case, I'm gonna keep. So if you don't want to come in here and communicate with us. You can do just that. Can you light that up again? That's right where I have that heat spot. Yeah. The ball lit up. Y'all can tell it's not totally, you know, stomping or anything. If you don't want to come in here with us, like Cody said, if you can light those up again, that would be awesome. Alright, there's a box in my hand right here. If you can use up all your energy, which I feel like you've been using ours tonight, by making us mad and doing all this pathetic stuff. So, and I hate that I have to talk like that, but... Just out that earlier. Um, so if you can communicate through this, use our energy. Tell us. We, we've told you our name, our names. Can you tell us your name? building was used for holding we can try to catch something through there you tell us something about your experience or tell us the truth about what happened Tom how old were you when you came here Prisons did you 
deep state from. speaking with right now. I know this might be your first time trying to use this device, but you're going to have to talk clearly and as loudly as possible. Who is in this room with us right now? Constant, and I have my yeah, camera. I've never, we've never had that happen. 
We had it just the one time at Trivet, and then... And we've been super still. Can you light up the ball again? In the hallway? You could hear it on the... Yeah, on the um, voice recorder. recorder. You could hear the camera yeah, did. do yeah. the noise. Or I think that's sensitive. Do you hear that five? That was a five, yeah. Are you knocking on the wall now? Do you hear that five? That was a five, yeah. Are you knocking on the wall now? We heard this knock while asking questions. However, when we looked back through the footage, it appeared that RG had accidentally caused this sound. I told the team that I was going to go for another piece of equipment downstairs. However, I felt inclined to bring the spirit box into the male's jail cell. This is where I began getting odd responses. Bob, did you have any experiences here or any tips for us on something that happened to you that we could ask about? It's me, Cody. It's me. Huh? It's me. <clears throat> Katie's taking some more still photos now. Did Pe you notice anything in your others? No. I, not even dust, which was odd to me. Mm -hmm. Something told me back up in here. Figure it out on the officer of the law, telling me to back up. something in there with you. Huh? There's something in there with you. I see it. You 
know, you ain't got to be so hateful. Who's the yellow belly that's in here? Start something slot again. Slot where? Here. Sure, if you've heard it before or not. Throughout history, there have been many songs written about the eternal triangle. This next one tells the story of Mrs. Grayson, a beautiful woman, and a condemned man named Tom Dooley. When the sun rises tomorrow, Tom Dooley must hang. Tom Julie, hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Julie, poor boy, you're bound to die. You like that song, Tom? It's all about you, bud. It's better about the time. Yeah, this battery, I mean, it just shut off because it, it wasn't even, it was, I looked at it. I mean, it's low, but it. Mm. Better Did you do that to Morgan's battery? Did you take the energy from her camera to be able to light the ball up? Got this box rolling. What's bad is this battery's on low too. Okay, so I'm feeling really sick on my stomach. I can't see you because your light's still on. Your IR light's still on. here affecting Morgan. Tom, we have all kinds of different devices here you can use if that's you. Did you used to feel sick being in this jail cell? Lots of history here. You're a big part of history, Tom, if that's you. For this area. Whoever's here with us that just set that light off, you can get some energy from the blue light that's on the floor. 
and try to let that ball again. Your ears are. Brought. How are you brought here? What kind of room is this? What kind of building? Put all your energy into this box right here. if I like that or not. All we've been feeling is like sick to our stomach. Heavy. Hatred. And then you said something about a child earlier for some odd reason. And now it pops up on this box. Window. Oh, okay. well, yes, I am sitting beside a window. <laughs> am I sitting in your seat? Do you want me to move? You're gonna have to make me move. Or are you mad that we covered the windows? Do you like being able to see outside? We took that away. That makes sense, that's what I was thinking about. There's something evil here. Triangle. Triangle. Love. And triangle of your burial site. It's the first time I've got that word for. Whoever we're talking to, you're doing good to get some words to come through. Tom, are you here? Otto, are you here? Is Anne here? Can you tell us on that box that's speaking words how Laura was killed or what she was killed with? Okay, hold that. We're in the old Wilkes Jail, Wilkesburg, North Carolina, <laughs> and we are. Today's date is the uh, is, is the twentieth of uh, May, twenty twenty two. I feel like that you guys, you know I'm talking to, uh, recognize me because I've been here a number of times and a number of evenings and we're your friends. And we would just like to ask you a few questions about the Old Wilkes Jail. Because I realize the, the wonderful history that the, 
that the jail had being built in 1859 and basically serving Wilkes County for 90 years. It's a pretty incredible building and we're proud to be here tonight. And I just like to, I know you had some experiences as a jailer and working with inmates who were staying in the jail. And here's just, a, I just thought maybe ask a few questions and see if you would be kind enough to share some of your experiences with us tonight. One question that I like to, to ask is, uh, did you ever have anybody, some memorable experiences where you had somebody that had too much to drink in the old jail? They brought them in for public drunkenness. Did anybody ever try to pull fast one on you to get out of here? Were they ever successful? It might be your phone. Oh. Just right, wherever see. it's at, just hit the button on it. Don't move it. The temperature is dropping right here. Where I'm at. Yeah. Are you close to me? Because yeah. if you are, touch my hand. That was your phone, I guess. It's hand held up. Temperature. Temperature is definitely dropping. How about that? I'm glad you're here with us tonight. Can you show us some kind of a sign? Uh, we're your friends, and we're interested in the history of the old jail, what you did here as a jailer and serving the uh, Wilkes County citizens. How many nights did somebody get for just being public, publicly drunk when they would spend the old jail? How many nights did they stay in jail usually? We're here to listen, have open mind. Would you like to tell us anything about what you know about who might have killed Laura Foster? Can you give us a name? If y'all can hear RG, can you go over towards that green light and make that green light change colors? It's over behind them. So, have you heard of a spirit box at all? Yes. Um, this is a SB7, mm -hmm. and we have just recently modified it to where there's no, um, there's not an antenna, so it hardly picks up any FM. So I'm kind of curious as to see if we can get anything through it. Yeah. Um, essentially, we're supposed to just hear static, but. If we get anything through it, I'll be very surprised. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I've experienced some with spirit boxes. And let's say it's distracting when they keep cutting it out on channels. Yeah. Were you, you consider yourself a good cut? Right there. Yeah. Heard something. Somebody moving. Might have been me. Because <laughs> I was changing. Were you a jailer here? Were you a wife, the wife of the jailer? Were you the wife of the jailer? If so, show us a sign. How many inmates used to stay in the old jail when you were here? So just remember, I took the antenna. We, this is the first time we tried this. Okay. Antenna's out. If it does pick up that it is very rare. It's what's on right now. So. I don't know how to explain that. Did the inmates like the food here? I heard no. Nice. No? That's what I heard. Did they eat cornbread? Did they eat eggs? Whoa. Ho -ho. Did you ever have any drunks spend the night in the old jail? With my own eyes, I saw a ball block. Really? Yeah. Coming.
At that moment, I observed a bright white ball of light heading down from the ceiling towards me. I watched it disappear a few feet from me, and I reacted to it and told my team, what makes this compelling and validates my experience is what I caught on the static camera beside me in the hallway. Did you ever have any drunks spend the night in the old jail? With my own eyes, I saw a ball block. Really? Yeah. Coming, coming from, like, that to me. Sleep at all? Huh? Literally from the roof, like, just coming. Were you pretty good at handling drunks when they came to the old jail? Huh? Oh, I didn't. I just, I was just looking at the day, y'all. That was crazy. Did you ever have anybody try to pull a fast one and escape the old jail? never see him on camera, but I saw it that time. Tom Dewey, are you here with us tonight? I feel like I keep hearing like a female's voice come through and it's multiple. I'm trying to say a sentence. Otto Wood, are you with us tonight? Have you ever heard of the judge, Johnson J. Hayes? I've got a box up there that'll detect your movement. Could you make that go off? I think I still see it up there, actually. Still there? Yeah, it's hanging off the top of the... I see it. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? After enhancing this audio, we concluded that the response was saying Yates. RG had stated that there could have been a possible jailer family at the old jail with the last name Yates. With further research, I was able to determine that Tom Dula's parents had actually lived nearby the families of the Carltons, the McNeils, the Triplets, and the Yates, thus making this piece of evidence credible. We've got a toy on the, the floor again that was lighting up earlier. That's right. That's the one I'm talking about. Can you make it light up again? Is that all the energy you have is to light that ball up? We'd really like it. 
need to light that ball up again. That's, that was good. That shows you that you're with us. Can you make that ball light up? How, how many children did you have? You want the ramp all on? Just What's the worst crime somebody's committed to be put in the old jail? Theft. Yeah. I heard. Theft. I heard <laughs> What's the worst crime somebody committed to be put in the old jail? Theft. If anyone wants to come speak with us, the time is now before we leave here tonight. Anybody ever been locked up for assault? We have a couple of different devices you can use to talk to us before we leave. If you want to try to light up that ball, or if you get close to this other green light, you can light up some more for us and let us know you're here. You have to get really close to it though, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> Can you light the ball up if you're a female? Female. Were you the wife of one of the jailers? Can you light the ball up if you were the wife, wife of one of the jailers? Were you a daughter of one of the jailers? Can you make that light light up? Or were you an inmate? Were you a, a woman e or a female inmate? Come on. Just to see. How old were you? Nothing. You did light up a couple times, didn't you? Yeah, Female inmate here. I know it takes a lot of energy to light that ball up, but you're doing awesome. We really appreciate it. Laura, are you by chance here with us? Did you know the jailer's name? Go soon, so you being able to light that light up again would be awesome. Are you by yourself? Is that you? I just heard a thump in the other like, hallway or something. Do you have friends that are still here? Can you make noises upstairs or in their other hallway so Kim can hear you? Make a loud thump. We're not here to hurt you. We just want to know the stories and the history of this place. Did you sleep downstairs or did you sleep upstairs? If you sleep upstairs, say yes. That was a no. no. Is that a no? That was a hard no. The screen. <laughs> we have to start packing up. Can you can you say one of our names or say goodbye? Can you light the ball up to tell us goodbye? Yeah, because we gotta take it with us. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I did hear that. Bye. I'm your old friend RG. I'll be back. See you soon. Yeah. He said go. I said bye. I think he said bye again. Bye. You've been a good host tonight too, or hostess. Uh, if that's the case, uh, we, we want to thank you for allowing us to come and visit tonight. And uh, it's been an enjoyable experience. Thank you very much for allowing us to come by and visit your jail.